Hi, today we're going to be uh, replacing the um, wires on a Thetford Aqua Magic 4 uh, foot pedal uh, flush unit. Um, this is a toilet for an RV. It has two flush pedals. One flushes the toilet, one adds water to the toilet bowl. Um, I'll be sending you a lot of information in the comments below, including the uh, replacement kit that you can order uh, off of Amazon for it and um, any additional information I can think of. So this is the Thetford uh, toilet that's got the broken uh, pedal. There's a cable in here that um, gets pulled whenever you push down with this pedal. And this pedal here flushes the toilet and this one here adds water to the toilet bowl. So we'll be removing the toilet bowl and replacing those cables today using a kit that you can find uh, online. This is uh, the actual kit. Take a quick video of that. There's the part number for it. Um, I ordered this off of Amazon. And um, the uh, kit comes with the instructions on how to take this off. I'll be following those instructions and uh, you can follow along. When you open up the uh, kit for the uh, wire replacement, this is what you get. And what this includes is um, some ball retainer screws. You've got your mechanism cover screws over here. Um, you've also got uh, a closet flange to replace the one that's on there now. You've got your lever and arm assembly with the cables attached. You've got this washer. You've got these, which are called ball retainers, and you've got a lever return spring that you can replace. Inside this little package, you'll find an Allen wrench and also the uh, wire retainer collars and the uh, little uh, wire retainer set screws all in one little package. The first part of the instructions is just simply to turn the water off, and then you want to disconnect the water line from the back of the toilet you want to be careful when you remove this water line not to bend it or use any uh, tools like pliers that might uh, break off the uh, or damage the water valve that uh, the water line's hooked to. I'll show you what I mean. So after you turn off the water, you want to make sure that you relieve the pressure that's still in the lines. And you can do that just by uh, holding down the pedal and allowing that to flush for a little while or turn on one of the other um, you know, valves. Uh, for water inside the trailer to relieve that pressure. Once that's done, you can come on back here and you want to uh, loosen this. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get it going the right way. There we go. And just allow that to uh, drop down out of the way. Next, we're going to be removing these bolts. The bolts that hold the toilet to the floor are located on either side inside these cutouts. The uh, instructions call for a 7 16 inch wrench, but um, I have found that it, it's larger than that. It turned out to be a half inch uh, wrench. Now, after you've removed the closet flange uh, nuts from the closet flange bolts, you want to go ahead and set them aside, put them somewhere safe, and then you want to carefully lift and remove the toys, the toilet from the closet flange. Well, now that the toilet bowl has been removed, I'm going to take it outside where I can work a little more uh, freely and not be so confined in this little toilet area. You're going to want to place your toilet upside down on a soft surface. I've just chosen to use this uh, fold it over towel. Next, you're going to want to turn the uh, toilet around so that the back is facing you. When I took out the toilet, the closet flange came out with the toilet, but they're actually supposed to disconnect, I guess, when you take them out in the bathroom. 
mine just happened to stick that's that's no problem with it upside down you can simply wiggle that off and that's going to expose the toilet flange seal you'll want to peel that out and throw it away and you'll have a new one that you can put on later for now you can uh, just cover it with this cap um, or you can also take that cap if this is still in the uh, bathroom it would look like that and you can take the cap and just put it down inside the hole to keep anything from falling down there or smelling it's up to you um, the instructions say to put it inside the hole like it is here once you've removed the ball retainer screws and the ball retainers from the foot pedals you'll want to go ahead and set them aside somewhere next you'll want to turn the toilet back upright with the front facing you and you're going to want to remove the toilet lid and the seat and you just do that by pushing this past the point of normal opening and it'll just unclick and come off you're going to want to remove four mechanism cover screws the screws are located here 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 one more right here it's going to be tempting for you to want to remove all the screws that go around the edge of the toilet seat but you don't need to there's only four one two three four now with the back of the toilet facing me I can remove the mechanism cover and expose the mechanism below now with the mechanism cover removed and the mechanism exposed we can see why the one foot pedal is not working. There should be two wires here, one here and one traveling from this top black hole over to here. You can see the end of that wire has been cut off. Uh, it broke right there and that's why the, the valve is no longer being uh, activated. Um, all we need to do now is to cut the remaining wire and move on. So you remove the wires by um, tilting the toilet backwards and you pull down the foot pedals and you push the foot pedals back up to expose the ball ends of the wires then you pull on the ball ends to remove the wires and discard them and then you can return it upright so you'll be tilting the toilet upright to its back so you can expose these uh, two uh, balls and then you want to pull on these and pull the wires out and get rid of them and then you will return the uh, foot pedal back up and set it uh, level again. Back at the mechanism, we want to release the water valve drink link. Um, the water valve drink link is this metal piece right here at the tip of the screwdriver. It extends from back here all the way to here. And to release that, what you want to do is place a flat bladed screwdriver between the underside of the link and the top of the lever arm assembly and then you just want to pry upwards to pop that off next you want to remove the lever arm assembly screw which is this one right here next we're going to remove and discard the lever arm assembly um, we're going to place a flat bladed screwdriver up underneath here and use it to pry this assembly upward now there is a um a, a, lev a, a spring located in the center of this lever level lever arm assembly and it's loaded so it can release you know somewhat uncontrollably when you take it off so the advice is to take a shop rag and place it over the assembly and apply a little bit of downward pressure on this while you're prying up with the um, screwdriver so again we'll be using a flat bladed screwdriver we're going to place it here at the base of the uh, lever arm assembly and the uh, seat of the toilet um, body and we're just going to apply downward pressure here and just tilt this up at the same time and when that happens you should be able to pop off the entire assembly. You're going to have a brand new one of these so you can just discard this entire assembly. The, the washer, the spring, the little uh, white valve that was on it can all go in the trash. Next you want to remove your level arm assembly from the package and uncoil uh, the wires. Um, you'll also want to grab the um the bearing 
Um, sometimes in shipment this might come apart, so it look like that. That's no problem. If that happens, you just want to set this right back on top so that it locks in there. This bearing is fed up from the bottom of this, so you'll turn it over. And um, you can install the bearing in that little hole in the bottom. And then flip it back over. Now, um, the next part you want to want to do is you're going to feed these wires into the uh, little black holes uh, back here. And uh, be they're going to feed themselves down to the bottom uh, near the foot pedals. Uh, during the last few inches before it reaches the end of the foot pedals, you want to move the toilet so that the edge of it can kind of hang off something. So I'm using this bucket and that way the wires can hang freely out from underneath it and you can access them. Uh, being careful not to cross my wires, I'm gonna go ahead and insert them into the two little holes here and feed them in. And then I'll feed those in just like so. I'm just going to rest this up here for now. And now with the edge of the toilet sitting on something that could allow the uh, pedals to hang down, you can see the two exposed ends of those wires that just came down. So the next part of this isn't that challenging. The only challenging part has been trying to figure out a way to get the camera angles right so you can see all this because there's a lot of things going on at once. What you're trying to do is you're trying to line up this post with the center of this L shape, which so it should go right in here. And at the same time on the bottom of this, you'll see this little valve has these two little prongs that stick up. Those prongs fall into those two corresponding holes on either side of the middle hole right there. So to do this, what you wanna do is slide this into the bowl cavity, this part back here at an angle and try to make it so that this post ends up right around in the middle of this at the same time. And you're holding all of this together while you're doing it. So you just stick it in at an angle and then you want to set it down and then you want to line up that valve with those little holes we pointed out earlier. Almost got it there. Need to rotate that valve a little bit so that the holes line up. Okay. This needs to be in the center. There we go. So now we've got it. So the post is in the center. This back edge falls underneath a, uh, basically a little retaining um, edge right here. It's built into the toilet. Oh, that just popped out. Well, if that'll allow me to see it easier. Grab well, a screwdriver. The part I'm talking about is right back here. It's like a little lip. And so this part right here needs to be underneath this, but over this. So let's put that back in again. They say practice makes perfect. Unless you are a New York cab driver. That doesn't seem to apply to them. Let's see. That's in place, that's in place, and that's in place. Okay, I'm going to make sure my little wires are all in there nice and neat. All right, so the way I'm checking this is I'm holding it down with my finger where the screw would normally be, and I'm just moving all of these parts to make sure that they move freely, and it looks like they are. So the kit comes with a uh, new long screw and a new washer for uh, the lever arm assembly. So you'll place the washer in first and then you want to go ahead and put in your long screw. Get it in there. 
And then you want to go ahead and tighten that securely. The old one was a Phillips head screw. The new one is a 5 16 inch uh, hex head. Next thing you want to do is install the spring assembly. You want to uh, install the lever return spring by rotating the lever arms uh, counterclockwise until the blade is in the closed position. So the blade that they're talking about is that blade down there. When it moves, uh, let me see if I can open it. You can see that it opens and shuts based on me opening and shutting this valve right here, or this lever arm. So if I push it all the way counterclockwise or until these wires are extended as much as they will go, then it's in the right position. Once that's done, um, your spring arm has both a short arm and a longer arm. The longer arm goes to your right. It goes on the actual valve lever while the shorter arm goes into this notch right here on the body of the toilet. So uh, I just sit this on here like that. I rotate it so that the arm is in between these two notches. And then by pushing this lever all the way counterclockwise, I can pull the lever arm spring right underneath that notch and put it in place. Now we're going to place the toilet upside down again with the pedals facing you. I'm using again a soft surface to protect that uh, toilet seat lid. Next, I want to rotate the foot pedals upward. And then I can see the two wires. What I want to do is take these two wires and I want to guide them into the larger slots on the two foot pedals. So there's a smaller slot and a larger slot. You want to guide these into the larger slots. Now, using a permanent marker, you want to mark the two wires right where they um, meet the plastic of the foot pedals. This illustration is a good one for showing where to mark those wires. After you mark the wires, you want to turn the toilet upright with the back of it facing you. Our next step is to use an Allen wrench that comes with it to assemble the wire retainer collars. Um, we're going to insert a little set screw into each collar and then uh, tighten it up a little bit so that it's ready to slide onto the wires. When you're done, you should have an assembly of the collars with the set screws already installed in them. There should be four of them. You want to make sure you do this work someplace where if you drop a set screw, you're going to be able to find it easily. I would advise you to do it on something with a lighter colored background, like a piece of white paper or something. You certainly don't want to do it like I did on this black background because it's hard to see them when they get lost. Now you want to go ahead and remove the lever uh, arm assembly spring again. And with it removed, you want to rotate the lever arm until the blade's full open position, which is all the way uh, clockwise or to your left, just like that. You'll know you're in the right position when that blade opens and you can see inside the uh, toilet down there. Once you've removed the uh, lever return spring, you want to go ahead and turn the toilet upside down again with the foot pedals facing you. If during everything your wires have come un, uh, I guess unlodged from those larger holes, you can go ahead and put them back in real quick, like so. Now you want to slide your uh, wire retainer collar over each wire. You want to align the bottom 
of the link mark with the top surface of the collar. Now you might meet a little initial resistance and you need to thread the collar on. So um, you go ahead and get the sucker on there. I'm finding that my set screw is maybe tightened a little too much. Release it a little bit. The bottom of the mark with the top of the surface collar. And then I'm going to tighten the set screw securely. Then I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, with the toilet's back facing you, you're going to now reinstall the, uh, the, the spring and the lever control arm. It's easier to put the lever control arm in first. And the only way to put it in is to, once again, rotate the uh, arm all the way to the uh, clockwise or counterclockwise position so that the, the valve on the inside is closed. And then uh, you put your spring back in and then you'll want to put your, not your spring, but your arm back in, and then you want to put your spring back on. Again, the short part of the uh, spring uh, arm goes towards the left, and the other one to the right. The, the long one basically hooks under there. So when you're done, it should look just like that. And then you want to go ahead and turn your toilet over, and you want to make sure that those um, wire um, wires look pretty much just like that they're sitting down in there and you can turn your toilet completely back over and get ready to put on uh, those little uh, wire um, plates they're called ball retainers so now with the toilet upside down and the pedals facing you you want to go ahead and uh, install two new ball retainers and two ball retainer screws onto your foot pedals and the wires feeds through the small hole in the ball retainer. I'll show you what so I mean. So this is your ball retainer. As you can see, it has both a large and a small hole. The large hole is for the screw and the small hole is for the wire. And they're going to fit right on here, like so. So I'm feeding the small, uh, the, basically the small hole is where the wire is going. And I'm dropping it down doing the same thing on the other one I'm lifting my pedal slightly so that they the wire retainers fall into the ball retainer holes and then I'm going to go ahead and load up a couple of screws
Now we're going to take our final two wire retainers and we're going to slide those on. Again, if they don't seem to want to go on, you might need to loosen up that set screw like I'm having to do to give that wire just a little bit more room to slide down. But you don't want to back that set screw all the way out because then you might lose it. So just enough to get it down on there. So you do that with one of them. And then we'll do that with the second one. Next you'll want to lift slightly on the uh, pedal so that you can remove any remaining slack and then you'll want to tighten down the uh, set screws completely so that you've taken out all the slack. You're good to go. So I placed the toilet on the edge of the bed of this truck so that I can uh, test to make sure that the um, pedals are activating the different uh, gate slider and the um, water lever correctly. So this one over here operates the uh, the gate in the toilet bowl and the one on the the right here operates this little lever which fills the bowl with water so i'm just going to go ahead and make sure they work pressing down on this one yep Oops. and then i press down on the other one and yeah it's moving that so uh everything looks good so when I tested the toilet, it worked fine. If for some reason those levers did not work correctly, then you'd want to go back and release the set screws and make sure that they hadn't slipped or tightened and then uh, repeat the steps leading up to the point uh, where you tested it to make sure that everything is in the way it's supposed to be. Um, everything works for me, so now I'm going to go ahead and clip off the um, excess uh, cable from uh, the top of that set screw. And then we'll start looking at reinstallation of the toilet into the RV behind me. We can go ahead and put back on the mechanism cover. These screws are made out of brass, so don't expect your magnetic screwdriver tip to hold them on for you as you line them up with the hole. But if you're careful, the screw is long enough that you can hold the screw to the tip of your screwdriver while you line up the edge of the um, hole with the tip of the screw. And reinstall the seat. We're just going to be lining up these curves with these two hinges. There we All go. right, now you can put on the uh, the closet flange seal on the bottom of the toilet so that the inner lip of the seal points towards the closet flange. So that'll look just like this. You've got this curved part. You want to put it on just like this. Make sure it's seated all the way around. I found it easier to put on the closet flange housing um, as a separate part, and then I'll put the toilet on top of it. So now I'll go ahead and put the toilet onto the flange. And I'm just lining up these two bolts to go through the two 
holes on the toilet tower. It's going to sit up a little bit because it's sitting on that gasket. Uh, when you tighten the uh, nuts down on those bolts, it should cinch it on down properly. Go ahead and tighten those down now. What you want to do is use your body weight to press down on the toilet while you finger tighten the nut. So I'm just going to sit on this thing and using my body weight, I'll reach down and tighten these until they're finger tight on both sides. And then once they're finger tight, you normally want to tighten them one to two turns more uh, with your wrench. So that's a full turn, uh, one to two full turns. I'm just kind of using my body weight to kind of rock. Make sure I've got these as finger tight as possible. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Two full turns. So it looks like I'm able to do it a quarter turn each time. So one, two, three, four. One full turn, five, six. I'm gonna go ahead and do it one and a half. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, five, five six. And you're tightening until it feels stable and that feels stable to me with that being done you want to go ahead and reconnect your water line I just recommend hand tight no use you're dealing with plastic over here so you don't want to use any tools You could crack that plastic pretty easily. With the water line hooked back up, I've turned back on my water supply outside. And now it's time to go ahead and check everything. So what we're looking for is the ability when we uh, press the right one is to fill the bowl with water. And now that works, that's great. And then the left one will flush the toilet well and the gate at the bottom. And also allow water to flow. So. Thank you so much for watching. Please take the time to uh, like and subscribe to my channel. And that way I can get rich and move to Belize. Y'all have a good day.